inside the bricks of their building has chips, microphones, cameras. The witnesses that they are going to bring are those who are working in the VSS. So those witnesses will sit in the other room and listen to our questioning and answer session with our clients. Then at the end of the day, when you now bring the, the, the witness to court, they already know what we are going to ask. Namdi Kano's lawyers expose how DSS spies on his privacy and discussions while in custody. Welcome to today's special report. In a shocking revelation, the legal team representing Namdi Kano has exposed to the media how the Department of State Services or DSS has been spying on his private discussion while he is in their custody. Recall that just a few hours ago, Justice Binta, the judge presiding over Namdi Kano's trial, overruled an application for bail presented by his lawyers. The judge accused Namdi Kano of previously jumping bail. However, the Supreme Court had earlier ruled that the lower court was wrong in its judgment. The Supreme Court emphasized that Namde Kano only fled after an assassination attempt by the Nigerian military at his home, an act many believe was orchestrated by Buhari's administration. Now, following the extradition from Kenya by the Nigerian government, Kano has been detained for over two years, with his trial dragging far longer than anticipated. Speaking to journalists after the judgment just yesterday, Kano's lawyers decried the hacking of their conversations with Kano prior to court hearings. They claimed that the DSS has implanted chips in their meeting areas to extract and misuse the information, thereby undermining their efforts in court. Now, let's hear directly from the lawyers as I'll be coming back to give you my thoughts about it. Please intentionally drop your thoughts in the comment section. Let's get to know what you think about the continued detention of Namde Kano. And we shall continually be here to serve you. Take a look. Another kind of ruling today, which uh, ordinary, the ordinary person on the street might think that uh, a favor had been done to us. But it's still the same thing. It's just the other side of the coin that was tossed. Uh, we are still going to remain in the, in, in, the, in the premises and facilities of the DSS. You know, this issue of bugging, this issue of bugging is a very critical and technical thing. And uh, we know that the, the Nigerian DSS is about the most sophisticated secret police in the whole of Africa. And they have a lot of equipment. The walls inside the bricks, inside the bricks of their building has chips, microphones, cameras inside the walls of their building. So there is no how uh, the court has made it uh, that they should give us a clean room. Who determines the cleanness of the room? Who determines uh, the positions of the box? Yes, so the thing, provided it's still inside the DSS premises, it's still there. Those box will always be there. These things have been built uh, long, long before now. You know, and these are these are structures and uh, box that have been planted many, many years. They can't break the walls of the houses of their rooms to remove those box. Now, now, let me tell us something. Recently, they moved us to the to the office of the assistant director that they call that they call adults. Now, in that place, it's, a, it's somebody's office. All manner of equipment. There are so many things. So, how do you even determine that the place does not have a bug? A room filled with property, chairs, television, gadgets, mic, uh, cameras. How do you determine what and what is functional and what is not functional? So, it's like it's like uh, giving us a banana with one hand and then collecting it with the other hand. So, there is nothing new. Nothing has changed. Provided you are in the premises of the, of the state security service of Nigeria, nothing has changed. A place where you can say it's not bug is the Nigerian prison. You can be sure that in the Nigerian prison nothing is bug. And now, the witnesses that they are going to bring are those who are working in the DSS. So those witnesses will sit in the other room and listen to our questioning and answer session with our clients. Then at the end of the day, when you now bring the, the, the witness to court, they already know what we are going to ask. They already know the answers to everything. So there, we want, you see, justice should not only be done, but should be seen to be done. Now, if you took us to, to the Nigerian prison, we believe that the Nigerian prison does not have special interest in this matter, as the DSS has. The DSS has 101% interest. Now, the, the, if you take us to the, to, the, to the prison, the prison people know that their function is to keep this man. They don't have, they are not coming to testify. Just uh, deny your client. Yeah, she did. 
did. Uh, she denied, in, in point of fact, she denied two applications. One is to restore his bail, and the other one is an alternative application. If you won't restore his bail, then transfer him to home detention. These two applications were geared towards providing the environment for him to get a fair trial. Unfortunately, the court was not in sync with us. But it's very, very important to stress this point that what got us this far, what led to all these problems, is the refusal of the court to obey or implement, for want of a better word, to implement the ruling of the Supreme Court that Mazin Nam the corner that will never jump bail. That he was driven into exile by the actions of the prosecution and therefore the ruling by the court that a jordan bail shouldn't have been made so in ordinarily we expected that this court would have just followed suit by restoring his bail but it didn't happen so now the court has that's not what the same court said so we are going to look at that we are going to go home as a legal team and ruminate over this and come out with a legal response to, to this anomaly the court made some order that he felt is in our favor, but really it's not in our favor. He made modifications in the conditions of his detention at the DSS. If you recall, they used to take documents from us. They used to list them in because they bogged the place and everything. She made an order that the room should be changed and all that. But I think this is pyaric and that we should take note. This is pyaric. It's not enough to guarantee that Mazin Namdekano will get a fair trial. So in the next few weeks or days or whatever, before the next adjourned date, you will hear from the legal team as to our next course of action. You have seen it for yourself that the continued detention of Namdekano is deeply frustrating. In the words of the lawyers, we are fighting to have him moved to the Nigerian Kujie prison where we can better prepare for his defense without the undue interference of the DSS which acts under the alleged instruction of the federal government. The legal team insists that the federal government, fearing Namde Kano's influence on potential release, is using every tactics to keep him detained. They argue that his continued imprisonment is a strategy to silence a significant political adversary. Now, many have frowned at the actions of the federal government's continued pattern of ignoring court judgment, as this is a broader way to undermine the democracy Nigeria is currently enjoying. You have seen it for yourself that these grave allegations echoes a familiar tune in the symphony of Nigerian politics and the judiciary. The intricate web of power dynamics, personal interests and legal intricacies under trying to weave a narrative that challenges the very essence of justice and impartiality. Do well to intentionally hit the like button so that YouTube can recommend this video as a means of courtesy to the producers of this content.